Tonight we're going to have a look at a couple of radios and uh, we'll start off with this one, uh, the DGND E1103. Now, a lot's been said of these particular radios and they are excellent. Uh, probably one of the, uh, uh, the best portable shortwave radios um, around. Uh, if you can sort of overlook their uh, rather quirky um, method of doing the volume and stuff like that. And, uh, but generally they're really good. Now, we're listening to uh, 5020 kilohertz, um, Solomon Islands. And uh, I'll just turn this up a little bit just to give you a bit of a... Oh. Let's see. Not a bad signal from the Solomon Islands on that particular radio. Now let's compare it to the Sony um, ICFSW7600GR. And uh, these are good radios. Let's turn that up a little bit. The light, the light in it is uh, quite ridiculously uh, inadequate, but great radios nonetheless, and um, quite sensitive. But you notice it's not quite as good as the DGen uh, D1103 on the Solomon Islands. There, um, the only thing that uh, really sort of irks me about this radio is that um, it doesn't have a tuning knob um, which I think is a real uh, bugbear when you're tuning if you want to uh, band scan uh, because the, uh, the radio does mute in between frequencies and um, it makes uh, sort of band scanning particularly difficult uh, but other than that the radio is very very well well built and um, uh, very very good unit indeed now we compare that to the earlier Sony this is the uh, 7600 uh, 7600D and if I can just turn that turn that up also in the Solomons and you can hear um, that the signals were uh, a lot noisier and uh, nowhere near as sensitive as either the DE1103 or the um, 7600GR. But nonetheless, very, very well built radio and um, a nice, nice set to uh, just tune around on. Again, though, it doesn't have um, a tuning knob. And uh, bear in mind that this one only tunes in a fairly coarse 5 kilohertz increments. However, as I've mentioned in previous uh, videos, uh, that you do have a uh, fine tuning uh, control on the side there to tune in between frequencies. Now just to compare it over the back there, um, and I've had this radio on this before, and uh, pardon the, um, the uh, camera shaking around here, but I'll just turn that up. And the Solomon's on the Eaton E1. And uh, let's hit the sync detector on that. We'll try the upper side. And um, a very, very solid performing radio. Um, probably one of the best portable, so-called portable, uh, receivers ever built. However, uh, they suffer from a great deal of quality control issues, uh, as uh, is well uh, mentioned on the net. And, um, you know, they do have uh, uh, problems with the, uh, uh, the display and, uh, and the like, so just be careful. Uh, if you ever you come across one of these radios, make sure it's in good working order. Uh, I have cleaned the sticky 
case off this and uh, took a bit of mucking around I can tell you but it was worthwhile in the end. So finally uh, we'll just shift the, this one over and this one out of the road. Let's do a bit of a, a juggle here and then we'll come to the um, ICF 2001D which was the flagship of the Sony radios and there we go um, again I'll just tune the sync on that and um, a little bit noisier than the Eaton E1 but um, and the sync is prone to uh, lose its lock uh, whereas the Eaton uh, the E1's a lot uh, uh, better probably in its sync but uh, nonetheless uh, these were a fantastic radio so um, just to recap I think if you're looking for a small portable shortwave receiver um, this one the DGND 1103 now as I've mentioned before uh, the latest version of these radios um, do have DSP and uh, they're prone to um, I think soft muting and also the um, sensitivity seems to be a little bit down this one's the original version and um, they are a lot better so there we go incidentally these radios are using only their inbuilt telescopic antennas and uh, so just to uh, give you an idea so for the smaller receivers probably my pick would be this one the DGN D 1103 um, closely followed uh, by pro by uh, the ICF 7600 GR. Now I didn't actually just for the sake of the exercise. Let's try to feel my way around here. Right, I'm just trying to find it. There we are, just engaged. I thought I'd engage the sink. Just bear with me for two seconds. Uh, no, maybe not. That's it. Now we have the sink uh, detector on this one. Uh, but you can see uh, that it is a little bit prone, like its big brother, uh, to lose sink lock. Uh, fairly easily and uh, I understand there's a number of uh, mods that you can do uh, to, to improve the performance of the synchronous detector but um, in reality you know it's pretty good so there we go hope you've enjoyed tonight's uh, presentation of a few radios I was going to uh, uh, bring up the um, the Grundig G3 which has got excellent uh, synchronous detector in it uh, but unfortunately it's uh, it's a wintry night outside and to go and get it recovered from the uh, radio shack is um, it's just too cold. So I hope you've enjoyed tonight's presentation and um, yeah, I'll look forward to the next video at some stage. Cheers for now.